Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Ha, Racha, Kodash, Ma, Ama. Double honors to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Double honors to my elder, Harawan Banyasharala of the Lions Day Camp here at Jacksonville, Florida. Salutations to the sincere Aki and pushing his truth and sincerity around the four corners of this earth. I'm Nakar Harab Banyasharala coming out of the Lions Day Camp of Yasharala here in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, today I'll be coming out of a lesson. I don't have much of a title for it, but, uh, you know, a little instance happened this morning and uh, it sparked. The spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua to come upon me, so I'm gonna just bring out these various precepts and scriptures, and hopefully it's edifying to the body and also correction to those who are going contrary to Yahweh Hashem Yahshua. This is Sirach chapter seven verse five. <clears throat> and Salaki, I'm a little bit unwell, my voice kind of messed up. So, anyways, this is Sirach chapter seven verse five. Justify not thyself before the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and boast not of the wisdom before the king so you know you're not supposed to justify yourself before the eyes of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai you're not supposed to boast of, of, of your supposed wisdom before Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai you know um if you're doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and you're doing it in the truth and sincerity, you have no need to try and justify yourself and or boast against or boast of the wisdom. If you're doing it, you're doing it. If you're doing it in sincerity, you have no need to do that. You don't have any need to prove anything to anyone, to anybody. As long as you prove it to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you you good. But again, don't justify yourself before the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know, don't be trying to make yourself look good in his eyes because he sees all and knows all. You know, don't be, don't be boasting about the wisdom that you have. If the Lord has given it to you, use it in the right ways. He gave you this power, use it the right way. <clears throat> Let's continue. This is Sirach chapter 8. Verse 15, it says, Travel not by the way with a bold fellow, lest he become grievous unto thee, for he will do according to his own will, and thou shalt perish with him through his folly. So you don't travel by the way with somebody that's bold and, and brazen in their actions and what they do. Because eventually that person will become grievous unto you. It will become a burden. It will become bothersome. Because why? He's going to do according to his own will. He's not going to do according to what's really right. He's going to do according to his own will. And if you stay around or you stay sticking with him or you stay dealing with him, guess what's going to happen? You're going to perish with him through his folly. So when you see that and you see a bold fellow, you get away from him. You, you keep distance. You don't deal. Because they just gonna end up being grievous and aggravating and, and, and burdensome. Let's continue. This is verse six, it's like it. This is Sirach chapter nine, verse six. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thine inheritance. So you don't give your soul unto these whorish women so that you won't lose your inheritance in Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. But a lot of cats have done that recently. You don't suppose to give your soul unto these hoes. That's why it says don't give your soul unto harlots. That's a whorish woman. A wicked woman. You don't give your soul unto them. So that why? So you won't lose your inheritance. In Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Many have gone out their wits for a woman and perished. But you can't tell Jake nothing. Verse 18 of Sirach chapter 9. 
a man of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated so a man of an ill tongue one who speaks dangerously or badly that man is a da that man is dangerous in a city in his city where he's at and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated when you rash in your talk you just steady running your face you running your mouth you're saying all kind of stuff that don't really that don't really matter you rash you're just saying anything a lot of the times people with rash tongues they don't regard the respect of others if that person wants to talk or not So let's continue. This is Sirach, this is Sirach chapter 10, verse 6. Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for any for every wrong, Salakia, and do nothing at all by injurious or injurious practices. So don't bear hatred for your neighbor for any old little thing. And 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 do not uh don't do anything at all by injurious practices. Don't mean don't be out here trying to do things on purpose, causing the downfall or the stumbling of someone else, especially a brother in particular. You should never ever try to trip up your own brother. You should always try to build up and edify your own brother. So don't be dealing in injurious practices, playing games with people, with grown men. That's a dangerous game to play. Let's jump down to uh, verse 27. No, verse 7. Pride is hateful before Yahweh and man. By both doth one commit iniquity. So pride is hateful in the eyes of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and man. Truly sincere brothers, humble brothers, hate pride. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah hate pride. And one who is prideful and, 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 and has that pride by both Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah and man, one will commit iniquity. One will 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 uh uh indulge, well not indulge, one will uh uh uh, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Engage in injurious practices in which iniquity will and can be committed. Living in transgression to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, immoral practices. That's what iniquity is immoral practices. It's too late in the game to be having immoral practices, it don't benefit you none. Now let's jump down to verse 27. It says, Better is he that laboreth and abound in all things than he that boasteth himself and wanteth bread. So it's better for you to labor in this work of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha and abound in the things of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha than one that's boasting himself up and wanting bread and wanting light, wanting the truth, wanting wisdom. It's better for you to labor and labor in, in, in honesty and in sincerity and in humbleness and in truth in all things than to boast about yourself and you end up wanting bread. You end up wanting the wisdom. You end up seeking what's right rather than knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Let's continue. Let's go to Sirach chapter 11 verse 29. Bring not every man into thine house. <clears throat> For the deceitful man has many trains. So don't bring every man into your house. Everybody ain't, ain't, ain't got good intentions for you. Everybody might 
ain't ain't uh ain't got your best interest at heart. Though they may try to sound like they are, and it, nah, don't bring every man into your house because a deceitful man has many trains. He has many devices. He has many many uh ways and 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 hidden agendas. It ain't never uh up front. It ain't never ever 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 legitimate it's always something behind it verse 30 like as a partridge taken and kept in a cave so is the heart of the proud and like as a spy watcheth for thy fall so just like a bird that's caught in the cage so is the heart of someone that is prideful that can't admit when they wrong won't go the right way to do the right things to get in back in right standards with you. How about you, y'all shy? They're like a spy that's waiting on your fall, always lurking, always watching, not minding their own business. They on that Esau Jones. Esau don't never ever mind his business. He always trying to spy something. Oh, I'm trying to see something. I'm trying to see. I want to see. So you you got to be careful. Verse 31, for he lieth in wait and turneth good into evil and in things worthy praise will lay blame upon me. So that, that, that deceitful man with those many trains, he lieth in wait and anything that's good, he want to turn it into evil. And things that are worthy of praise, he'll lay blame upon you when he see or feel or think, oh, I got you. I can I, I can I can uh I can I can point the finger now. He gonna try to point the finger, so you gotta be careful. Verse thirty three. Take heed of a mischievous man, for he worketh wickedness, lest he bring upon thee a perpetual block. So you gotta pay attention to somebody that's mischievous. You gotta pay attention that pay attention to that sporadic, spontaneous, out of the blue stuff. You gotta be you gotta be paying attention. Because a mischievous man worketh wickedness in that. And if you don't pay attention, he'll bring a perpetual blot upon you. If you're not guarded as you're supposed to be, he'll cause you to look bad. Or he'll cause some kind of uh, uh, a blemish, we'll say, on your record, or i.e. your character. So you got to take heed of a, mis of a mischievous man. Verse 34. Receive not a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee. Salakia, I'm going to read that again. It says, Receive a stranger into thy house, and he will disturb thee, and turn thee out of thine own. So if you receive a stranger into your house, i.e. a mischievous man, and you ain't paying attention, he going to disturb you. He going to become grievous. He's going to become aggravating and bothersome unto you. And he's going to turn you out of your own. He'll end up casting you out of your own abode. Casting you or taking you out of your place of peace. Of, of, of solidarity. Or uh, 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 established. Being established. Or founded. <clears throat> so like you. Had to take a little sip of some, some good tea. Uh, let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 12. It says, when thou wilt, you know what I'm saying, it just, this is edification purposes. You know, if it's a cut, hey, too bad. This is the words of wisdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, out of the book of Sirach. This is verse 12, it's like in chapter 12 of Sirach, verse 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it, so thou shalt be thanked for thy benefit. So when you're doing good, Know who you're doing good for and know who you're doing good to so that you'll be thanked for your benefits, so that you will be honored for your help that you gave or the good that you did. Verse 2, do good to the godly man and thou shalt find a recompense, if not from him, yet from the most high. So you, 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 reckon, you do good to the godly man, your brothers, you help your brothers, you help your Akim. You do good to those that are righteous. And in that, you will find a recompense. If your brother don't pay you back, 
Yahweh Bahashim Yahusha will pay you back. You will still get your recompense. You will still be compensated because the Heavenly Father sees that. But you got to do it out of the kindness and the goodness of your heart. You got to be, and also, you got to also be led of Yahweh Bahashim Yahusha too. Verse 3, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. So good don't come to you when you always occupied in evil, when you always on some tomfoolery, on some left field sugar honey iced tea. Ain't no good going to come to you. You know? Nor to him that giveth no alms when you ain't giving alms, when you ain't when you ain't offering and providing help. When you ain't doing right by others, ain't no good gonna come to you. Verse 4. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Those who sin, sinning, sinner is transgression of the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Transgression of the law, statutes, commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Flat outright being disobedient and hard headed to the Heavenly Father and His Son, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Man, it says, Help not a sinner. This is why. Verse 5 Do well to him that is lowly, do well to him that is humble, that is meek. But give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread. Don't waste your substance on those who don't deserve it. And give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good that thou shalt have done unto him. So you don't waste your, your, your substance on those who of the ungodly who are undeserving because you're going to receive you're going to receive twice as much evil from that person that you that that ungodly person that you help for all the good that you have done to that person so you got to be careful verse 7 of Sirach chapter 12 give unto the good and help not the sinner give unto the good give unto the righteous Give unto those who are going according to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in truth and sincerity and are not boasting about what they're doing. You ain't never ever got to boast about the words of the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah if you're doing it. If you go on YouTube and you look at these YouTube pages, that speaks for every brother that's doing the work. A brother's work will speak for him. He don't have to say nothing. Don't boast of your works. Don't try to justify yourself before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And stop trying to prove sugar hunt iced tea to men. Man ain't nobody to be proving nothing to. You need to be proven to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, period. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it, period. You show Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Quit worrying about showing the man. That's man pleasing. That's respect of persons, and that's a sin. Let's continue. Let's jump down to verse 13. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or such as come nigh wild beasts? So who's going to pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? So who's going to pity a brother that's caught up with a wicked woman? You wanted that serpent. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no feeling bad. Ain't no, ain't no getting. Uh, there's no garnering uh, 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 sympathy when you grab, when you grabbed hold to that serpent. Who will pity a charmer? You out here playing with danger. When you get jacked up, ain't no feeling bad for you. That's what you wanted. If you go near that wild beast, that wild beast attack you. You deserve it. That's your fault. By yourself. Let's continue. Verse 
This is Sirach chapter 19, verse 2. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away, and he that cleaveth unto harlots shall become impudent. So wine and women will make a man of understanding to fall away if he indulge too much into wine and into women, i.e. philosophies and doctrines and actual women. It'll make a man of understanding to fall away. And when you cleave it unto a harlot, that's the you cleave unto that's a that's an actual physical thing. A harlot, i.e. a whorish woman. If you cleave unto that whorish woman, you can become impudent. What is the word impudent? It means hard-hearted or disrespectful to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And that's gonna lead to disrespect of the Akim. Period. So wine and women will make a man of understanding to fall away. He that cleaveth unto a harlot will become impudent, will become disrespectful to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and the body. Let's continue. Sirach chapter 20 verse 7 A wise man will hold his tongue Till he see opportunity But a fool and a babbler, babbler Will regard no time So a wise man is going to wait For his time to speak But a fool and a babbler They just going to keep on talking And 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 they're not going to regard no time They're just going to keep running their face Keep running their mouth Verse 8, he that useth many words shall be abhorred, and he that taketh to himself a authority therein shall be hated. So when you use in many words, you're going to be abhorred. To abhor is something that means to despise or to dis dis dislike vigorously. You don't like it. You detest it. And when you take to yourself authority, you're going to become hated. You're going to become very disliked. Look at Esau. See, a fool and a babbler is disrespectful. They just keep talking. No matter how many times you may say a specific thing, they never stop. They're just going to keep going until, the, to, until you just cut them short completely. And then when you do that, oh, it's feeling some kind of way now. Well, according to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the Lord says a wise man will hold his tongue until he see opportunity. When he find a space, then he'll speak. But a fool in the Bible is going to keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And you use in many words, you're going to become hated. You're going to become abhorred. And when you try to take authority to yourself, you're going to become hated. Let's continue. Verse 13 of Sirach. Chapter uh, 22. Talk not much with a fool, and go not un go not to him that hath no understanding. Beware of him, lest thou have trouble, and thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest, and never be disquieted with madness. So you don't talk much with a fool. You don't go unto that fool, that person. You don't go to him that don't have no understanding. You know, you got to beware unless you end up having trouble. You end up being aggravated and vexed. You know, and end up defiled with his fooleries. His, 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 his most odious words. His, you know, depart from him. That line up with Proverbs, I think Proverbs either 14 and 7 or 7 and 14 it says when thou perceivest not the lips of, of knowledge uh, within him depart you know was roughly paraphrasing let, let me let me find it real quick let me find it let me find it real quick it says go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not the lips of knowledge within him I think it's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7. Yep. It says, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. And it don't take 
no 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 thirty minutes so I would have found out. Oh yeah, this this oh yeah okay this mother this mother Hubbard ain't got no no understanding. It, it take you about thirty seconds or to a minute, but okay yeah this so sometimes I don't even take that long. As soon as they open their mouth, you be like, oh yeah this this mother Hubbard right here don't have no understanding. So again, talk not much with the fool and go not to him that hath no understanding. Beware of him, lest thou have trouble. And thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest. And never be disquieted with his madness. So you cut him off, you get rid of him. Right, bye, see you later. So that you won't be defiled with his fooleries. You will find rest, and you won't be disquieted with his madness. He won't get on your nerves. He won't bug you. Let's continue. There we go. Last point. Hold on. Let me check. Okay, yeah, this is the last point. Sirach 33 and 5. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel, and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. So the heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. You know, you look at a wheel, it's round. It just goes round and round and round and round and round and round. And most time, people that are foolish, they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. You know what I'm saying? Their thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. I mean, it, it, it's just constantly going. It's constantly moving. They're constantly spewing out something that you don't want to hear. You, something that you ain't really trying to talk about. Something that you really ain't even trying to be dealt up with or bothered with. So, yeah, these were just some words of wisdom. The power and spirit of Yahweh by Shimia Shah and some cuts too. But um, yeah, man, be well, man. Be aware. Just be aware. Shalom.